Hello and welcome to the fourth part of the playthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC Micro. I don't know why I always say welcome as if it's an actual show. And at the top of the hour we'll be playing uh, music. Uh, anyway, um, we've already done that in fact. This is a different puzzle. We have now arrived at the four keyhole puzzle which I said baffled me when I pl first played this game in school back in the 80s. That's how old I am. And uh, still somewhat baffles me. Actually, it doesn't baffle me anymore. I uh, kind of realised that what you have to understand about this puzzle is that the um, key blank that you're filing is in fact rotated 90 degrees to the left, and you're looking at... Um, you're looking at it face on as if you are a keyhole, but rotated 90 degrees to the left. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm not sure I explained that very well. Let us simply um, start filing away. We have to make a key, a, a skeleton key essentially, that will fit all the, uh, all the four keyholes. Represented above at the top of the screen in glorious uh, Mode 7 teletext graphics with character codes and all that sort, sort of nonsense, which was uh, quite fiddly to do. And uh, I applaud the Association of Teachers of Mathematics for creating this puzzle, um, even though I hated it at the time. Um, this is what you have to do. You move around, right means move right, F means file away that block. Um, I'm just trying to do both things here um, and also as I suspected, I've already lost count of how many um, blocks I've actually filed. That must be one, two, three. Right, one, two, three. So I need to do another one. Oh, do I need to do another one? One, two, three, four. That's uh, one, two, three, four. I've done four there, haven't I? One, two, three, four. Um, I believe I need to do that. And then go down and um, file that. I may be making a huge mistake here, in which case um, I will have to... Um, go back and do it all again. Um, oops. Fine. Uh, sorry about this, I've gone a bit quiet here. It's just that I'm trying to read the um, walkthrough and also provide commentary. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, otherwise, the instructions will... Perhaps I should just try and... Uh, just jolly well do it. Use my brain. Use my own brain for a change. No, that'll never work. Um, I probably have to... Well, actually, no, I'll try and do that. I'll just try and file away. Uh, and go back here. Uh, file away that bit, that block. Um, go left again. Do I need to file that one too? I think I do. Now we leave uh, a fair few blocks unfiled, because after all we need um, a contiguous piece of metal to act as a key, otherwise we'd be up the creek. But in fact, um, even if I did create a hole there, I think we'd be alright, because of course, don't forget, this is the um, front end of the key. 
Um, so actually, we'd be okay. Anyway, what am I talking about? Um, there. I believe that's it. And that to me is a rather familiar shape because I remember that shape. Because at the time when I first played this, and I know I keep going on about this and making myself look a complete idiot, but uh, at the time I didn't quite understand how this worked. So I sort of committed this shape to memory because of course we had to play through this adventure several times. I'm not sure if you can save your game. Um, but I, I do remember we had to file away this key several times um, before we eventually um, finished the game. And I remember this shape. It's etched into my memory. And how useful that is. Anyway, let us now unlock the door with this uh, brilliant key. And in fact, yes, it's the great shape, and I got it right. And the east door, the huge east door, has swung open. Can you, in fact, save your game? Let's see what happens if I try to save. The command save causes your current position in the game to be saved on the disk. This erases any position previously saved on the disk. Ah. Are you sure this is what you want to do? No, it isn't. I don't actually need to say because I'm using an emulator. And by the way, the BBM emulator, which I'm uh, running on the on a MacBook and a fairly old MacBook, is um, very good. And um, I'm very grateful to um, the author of it, who I will uh, credit properly at the end of the walkthrough. So um, I've been using the emulator to, in fact, save state to save the state of the entire Beeb. Uh, virtual machine here, um, which is a very handy thing to be able to do. Right, let's now go through the door that we just unlocked with the um, filed key. You're in a panelled room. Round the walls are 17 panels covered by wallpaper with a repeating pattern. Each pattern uses the same basic unit, but the way in which the unit is repeated is different for each panel. Doors lead to the west and north. There's an octahedron made of ivory here. Well, first of all, of course, we get the octahedron. Um, some of these objects you can abbreviate quite radically and some not. I don't know what the logic is. Anyway, um, the other point about this room is that the description, the rather detailed description of the panels around the room, the wallpaper, is utterly irrelevant, I believe. I don't know why it's been described in such detail. Um, a repeating pattern. I mean, can you read the pattern? Can you? It doesn't even understand the word pattern, so quite why um, this is described in this way, I don't know. I'm just reading it and wondering if you're supposed to. You, you know, when this game was originally played in schools, I'm sure the teacher would set exercises based on the puzzles, the themes of the puzzles in the game. So perhaps this is a challenge to the player, players, to reproduce such wallpaper patterns. Um, and perhaps there were examples given in the manual of patterns. Uh, there are 17 panels with a repeating pattern each band using. Yes, well, um, I have no idea. Um, you can't, by the way, examine objects um, in this game. Apart from the fact that it doesn't understand a lot of vocabulary. The vocabulary is quite limited because of the memory constraints and because it's really not um, about having a huge vocab. It's about teaching math, so it's limited. I can't, for example, um, examine any objects. I, can, I only understand look. I'm afraid I can't look in particular places for you. That is a misleading statement because later on you can actually use the word look, the command look, in a, a slightly surprising way. Anyway, of course you, you don't need to examine anything in this game, um, which simplifies things considerably. So I don't know why I mentioned it. Anyway, um, we've got the octahedron and we're in a room which is uh, very detailed and ornate and meaninglessly so. North. You are in the southwest corner of the walled garden. Close by, hidden behind a huge cyanoth... I do apologise. I'm uh, rubbish. Cyanothus bush 
is a small door leading into the palace. Nothus or Cianothus. But, of course, it doesn't matter. I don't think um, there's anything you can... I mean, again, you can't actually look at things. And it doesn't understand the word bush, so... Um, which is just as well. Um, north, uh, again, I believe. You're in a walled garden filled with blue flowers. There are beds of delphiniums and ancusas. Again, I don't know. The air is filled with the scent of lavender and buddleia. The palace is on the south side of the garden, and some stone steps lead up to a balcony. Can you tell I'm not a gardener? On the north side, a path leads through a gap in the wall. Let us go through the gap in the wall. You're on a lawn which leads down to a wide river. A notice on the bank reads, Danger, piranha fish. Danger, piranha fish. It's there. Um, there are thorny hedges to the east and west. To the south, there is a path through the gap in the wall. An old and rusty tin bath is lying on the bank. Yes, well, what are we to do with this bath? You know, we can't, in fact, um, examine it, can we? And so how are we supposed to know what is going on? Well, uh, wonder of wonders, suddenly you can look at things, <laughs> albeit without using the word at. So you can't look at Bath, I don't believe. No, it doesn't understand the word at. Um, so, um, there we are. So, uh, you have to look Bath, and suddenly you find another puzzle. And this is quite a clever one, because you need to work out which of the objects that you've found and are carrying around, have been carrying around, will plug the holes in the bath. Because, as it says, the bath won't float as it's not quite watertight. It has a triangular hole. It has a rectangular hole. It has a large hole with five sides. Pentagonal. It has a square hole. It has a small hole with five sides. Also pentagonal. Um, and you need to plug the holes with the correct objects. And I presume that at this point, the teacher who is supervising the playing of this game, which is, of course, not to be played unsupervised, would have intervened and said, let's work out. And, and this would have been an opportunity for a lesson on um, regular icosahedrons and dodecahedrons and all those things we've been carrying, because you can quite easily not know which object plugs which hole and still solve the puzzle. And to do so, you simply use the tetrahedron, for example. The platinum tetrahedron neatly fills, neatly fits the triangular hole. And so it gives away the answer. Um, it would have been good if the game had forced you to specify which hole you're trying to put each object in. I mean, I've, of course, you could still do it all by trial and error. But um, ah, there it is. Simplicity, simplicity, always simplify, I suppose. That's maths. That's a mathematician's mind for you. So we use each of our objects, and it tells us um, which hole is plugged by the object. The gold cube fills the rectangular hole. Um, does it? Good. I suppose the point there is that a square is a kind of rectangle. Use the icosahedron. And we will find that, in fact, the jade icosahedron has plugged a large hole with five sides. Being that an icosahedron is, of course, a, an object made up of uh, numerous equilateral triangles, you may be, and, and in fact, looks in profile rather like it would plug a hexagonal hole. In fact, you can see on this image here, that it does in fact describe a pentagon in a particular orientation, and that would plug the hole. So well done once again, the Association of Teachers of Mathematics. Um, 
we have plugged that hole with the icosahedron. We now can stop uh, mucking about and in fact use the rest of our objects. Uh, have I used the octahedron? No, I haven't. If I use the octahedron, we find that it's filled the square hole. Um, in a particular orientation, it would indeed fill a square hole.